Hi everybody, welcome to Prince Mojo YouTube. Game of Thrones season eight, episode one leak. This is the first one. Warning spoilers ahead. Do not go forward if you do not want to know what's going to happen in season eight or little tiddly bits what's going to happen. Not the whole story, but little bit. So let's get it going, people. Seems in season seven there was an attack on East Watch by the Night's King in the fight. Tormund and Gendry are there. They are able to flee the scene. The undead Visarian sets crows on undead fire. Lord Beric Dondarrion, still there fighting, stays behind to fight the White Walkers. His time is finished. He's going to get killed off. But before he gets killed, he kills the White Walker that killed Ed. Ed is stabbed to death by a White Walker. So Ed is gone and Lord Beric Dondarrion is down. And Castle Black is burned to a ground. So the Night Walk. The White Walkers are coming, and they're coming really fast now. Scene 2. Daenerys, Jon, Tyrion, Davos, Jorah, Brienne, Podrick, The Hand, Sande, Varys, and Theon all arrive at Winterfell. They've all come to Winterfell to make a last stand, it seems. Davos remarks that it's, it has gotten much colder and darker since he has left with Jon. Jon and Arya first reunited. Daenerys meets Sansa Stark, and Sansa asks whether she and Jon are in love now. Jon and Iris don't give a proper response to that. Sansa doesn't seem to be pleased with Jon returning to Winterfell and Daenerys' presence. It's going to be a bit of a problem with all these people in one place at the same time. Jon notices this and chats with her. She mentions Little Finger's death and how he has always betrayed them under their nose. She says it's a plain stupid to wor work with Cersei Lannister, which everybody knows is plain stupid. She's got a, a back plan going on in her head. The Hound and Arya also have a conversation with each other. Arya tells the Hound she did not regret to leave him behind without having him killed off. The Hound answers that Arya should have killed him off right there, especially with the things he's seen behind the wall. He'd rather be dead than fight the White Walkers again and the stuff they are doing. Scene 2 over. Scene 3. Euron Greyjoy arrives back in King's Landing with the Golden Company and meets up with Cersei Lannister and the commanders of the Golden Company in the throne room. Cersei thanks Euron for having the cell swords shipped to King's Landing. These are the bounty hunters. These are these are the people she's hired to kill. Daenerys and her crew, but uh, we shall see what happens. Cersei orders the commanders in chief to take Storm's End and to have the army gathered in the fortress. Robert Baratheon once told her that the fortress had stood for many centuries and she, sh she's sure that it will keep standing during the long night as well. Since there's no Baratheon holding the castle any longer, it wouldn't be too difficult just to take it themselves. They'll need to protect themselves during the Great War. Later that night, Euron Greyjoy is about to have sex with Cersei Lannister. Euron jo jokes that she won't miss her brother after she finds out what he can give her. Cersei makes a face and this face says it enough. She isn't too pleased with Euron in her bed, possibly possible needed to be seen here. The following morning, Euron leaves with his ship, the silence to ferry the cell source to Storm's End to take the fortress after he comes back. He tells Cersei that he wants to be her king. Inside the silence, Euron has a conversation with Yara Greyjoy about Queen Cersei. Yara is still his prisoner. Yara point blank tells him that she knows he isn't interested in being Queen Cersei's pet or husband at all. Yara laughs and tells her his good friends from Bravos will take care of that problem soon enough. So everybody's backstabbing everybody on the evil side. Is Cersei going to get killed or is Yara going to get killed first? We shall see. Scene 4. Daenerys, Jon, Sansa, Tyrion, Davos, Missandei, Sam, Varys, the whole crew, and the Northern Lords, and the Knights of the Vale gather in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Sweet Robin and Johan Royce are also present in the scene. Sam reunites with Jon and the two share a hug. Jon tells Sam he's glad to have him back. The Northern Lords are pleased to see, pleased to see or accept Daenerys as their queen. Daenerys defends herself very well, but she doesn't get the support of the North just yet. Lyanna Mormon tells Daenerys Targaryen that she will never call her your grace because she only knows one king, and that is Jon Snow, the king in the North. Tyrion smiles and mentions that she is a ferocious girl, on which Jorah replies, that stand back for anything. Jon tells them there's no time to argue with each other and brings up the 
that there hasn't been the word of the Lannister army yet. Sansa responds that she warned them not to trust Cersei Lannister. Tyrion mentions that they can trust his brother Jaime, but Daenerys doesn't seem to agree with on this one. The group discuss how they will defend the North against the Night's King. Robin doesn't really seem to care and accept John's proposal. After the meeting, Daenerys tells John that the Northerners really are stubborn and small-minded people. Scene 5. Theon Greyjay visits the Godswood of Winterfell and thinks of his friend Rob and meets with Bran Stark. He immediately apologizes to Bran for everything he has done against Stark, stock, but Bran tells him there's no need for that. He knows that Theon has redeemed himself by saving his sister Sansa. He has seen how much he has suffered at the hands of Ramsay Bolton. Bran sees everything unbelievable. Theon asks him how he knows all this about Bran, but Bran doesn't respond to that. Arya and Brienne are training and John is impressed by his sister's fighting still skills. Arya mentions that he has never forgotten to stick her enemies with the pointy end. He asks Arya why she didn't join the meeting in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Arya answers that Sansa is way better in those things than she is. At least that's something for Sansa that Arya can depend on her sister now. Scene 6. In Volantis, Lady Melisande enters the Red Temple. She again welcomes the Kinvara. Melisande tells Kinvara that she played a part in the Great War to come. She has united ice and fire. She has served King Jon Snow, the prince who was promised and brought him back to life. Kinvara tells Melisande that she served their god well on the part, but she has also made a lot of mistakes which she needs to pay for. Kinvara tells Melisande that their god demands one more sacrifice of Melisandre, which requires her to return to the north. Melisandre answers that she isn't allowed to enter the north. Kinvara smiles and answers Melisandre that she could benefit from her punishment for them, which means Jon Snow will definitely kill her, or Davos will kill her, and she knows she's going to die. She already said that in Season 7, Episode 5. Scene 7, we see Jamie Lannister at an inn when he meets up with Bronn. Jamie is surprised to see Bronn and asks him why he followed him. Bronn answers that there's nothing left for him in that stinking city and he's up to for some adventure in the north. Jamie is glad to have Bronn by his side. Bronn asks Jamie why he has left the woman he loves the most, but Jamie doesn't fully respond to his question. He then asks that he's planning to do what he's planning to do now he's left King Landing. Jamie tells Bran his own his way to River and to bring the garrison Lannister army back to the fold. Bran asks him why he would give up the castle he has been occupying. Jamie answers, "What purpose that would have? What does he gain in that? For all he cares, the Edmure can have River run back." I think Jamie has just given up in everything else and is going to see help his brother Tyrone out fight the White Walkers. Scene eight. Tormund and Gentry arrive in Winterfell. It's going really fast now. Everybody's traveling really fast. Jon Snow asks Sansa why Bran didn't take the time to join the meeting in the Great Hall. and didn't even come to speak to him. Sansa tells Jon Bran has changed a lot and calls himself a three-eyed raven now. She tells him not to expect much of a conversation with him. Samuel comes in between and tells Jon there's something here and Bran urgently needs to tell him. Bran first sees Jon in the God's Wind, God's Wood. When he's looking into the past, John mentions that he has encountered a walk beyond the wall. Sam responds that Bran is much more than a walk, he's a green seer. To the two inform John Snow about his parentage, with which John doesn't seem to believe at first sight is all shook up in it. Bran tells John he knows everything about him. He saw him beyond the wall, surrounded by free folk. He saw him fighting at hard on against the king. And he saw how he stabbed, was, was stabbed to death by his own men. John can't really believe he is a Targaryen. Sam mentioned that he is the one with the right claim on the Iron Throne, not Daenerys Targaryen, but Aegon Targaryen.